Okay, so if you're still with me, you've made it this far, we are almost done. I uh, just want to go through a couple of things real quick on asset management, and then we will go ahead and get started in the construction kit. In terms of asset management, uh, back at the beginning, we took a look at textures and meshes so you're going to want to go ahead and create a directory for your mod to store your assets that are going to go in your mod most people will go ahead and prefix or name a folder after their mod so it's easy for you to browse to the author of the paintings and textures mod named uh, their folder axe in my case um, mine is named Baylock. Uh, these are all going to be the assets that will be making up my Helgen rebuilt mod if I ever get it finished. So I just went to my meshes and I have a folder already there named Baylock. And then I added a new folder called Paintings. And you see there is my first NIF for my first painting. I like to go ahead and name my assets after my mod so they're easy for me to find and easier to look up in game. I think most people will do that. The main thing you need to be aware of here is you need to be sure when you're copying the mesh from Artisanax's uh, meshes, uh, all the, the frames and stuff, you need to be sure that you're getting the proper frame that corresponds with the texture that you're editing uh, it's not really that hard everything is named you know very conveniently so just you that's the only really thing you really have to look out for is to be sure that you're putting the proper mesh in your uh, your folder here for your mod so if you've been following along in the tutorial and using the same uh, artwork that I'm using you can just go back to the axe folder paintings and it's the very first NIF file is the one that corresponds with the artwork that we've been using so you can just go ahead and copy that paste it over into your mods folder and rename it however you want to rename it and you should be good to go there in terms of the first mesh you're going to use and then as you create more just make sure as you're going along that you're copying over the correct NIF for the piece the piece of artwork the canvas that you are painting in GIMP and exporting that way it just makes sure everything lines up in the game when you get ready to put the texture sets together so we can go back to data and go down and look at my textures again it's just the root textures folder I have a folder named Baylock and then a, a paintings folder and then in there I have the two textures that we've been working on I've renamed them now I uh, should have just renamed them properly to begin with but I had to go back and rename them uh, so we got Baylock painting 01.dds that's the main artwork and then the Baylock painting 01 underscore n is the normal file that we created so now the real fun begins we can go ahead and launch the creation kit which I already have up here and we're going to start with statics so move down your tree and click on all of your statics here and what we want to do is we want to right click where all of the assets are and create new uh, and for this one I'm just going to name it Baylock painting 01 and once we've got that up then you go down here to where your model uh, edit is click on edit and browse to your models most of the time this will come up somewhere in your meshes directory uh, you may have to just find exactly where it's at but it should come up in your meshes directory and there's our uh, Baylock painting 01 NIF and that's our model now when you pull that up you'll see that it's still showing the original piece of artwork the reason for that is is because in NIF scope there's a texture path that is already designated but we're going to clear that up with a texture set so don't worry about that right now just go ahead and hit OK to save that and hit OK again and you should have your new static now I'm going to sort that by Baylock and I should be able to find here uh, where is it? There we go. Baylock Painting 01. And you can uh, right click there and hit preview. And uh, I like to take this ground plane off. And as you can see, as I said, we've still got the original painting uh, piece of artwork, the canvas in there. Uh, the frame is nicely done though. So uh, that's going to work well for, for what we're doing. So we could just close that back out. And what we want to do now is create a texture set. 
So if I go over here and click on texture set, I've got this sorted uh, filtered up here for Baylock. I've already got a couple of texture sets in here. I can right click on this and hit preview. Whoops. Sorry, double click on it and you can see an idea of, of the texture set there. You have two different options, well more than two, but uh, what we're working on only is going to have two options. You've got a diffuse, which is your normal main looking texture, and then the normal map that we, uh, that we created. So just go ahead and click out of that. We want to go back over here and create a new texture set. So I'm going to name this one Baylock Painting. O1 texture set. Apologize, I can't type very well. I've got a microphone in front of me and it's blocking my keyboard. Uh, so once we get that, I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK. Then I can go back and edit that. And what we want to do is make sure that we have the diffuse uh, selected and then go down to edit and it should browse somewhere in our textures folder um, in this case it came right to mind so I can the first one there the, the regular texture that's going to be our diffuse and as you see there it's sort of skewed looking in this uh, picture but that's okay and then click on the normal below that and load image and just go back to your normal and you'll see the the purple normal file that we created earlier and just hit OK and you're good to go so we want to go ahead and just uh, save our plugin, and then we want to go back to our statics and find the static that you created and just click on that and hit edit and you'll go down here to where the model line is and hit edit on that and then from here what you do this is where all your alternate textures are uh, this is where we're going to place the, the texture set we just created so right click and hit new and I can just filter that by Baylock and there is my Baylock Painting 01 texture set select that and hit OK and you will see that the texture has changed to our uh, painting that we've done so just hit OK hit OK again and then I like to go ahead and hit save and so what we can do now is we can just go up here and look uh, right click and hit preview and like I say, I like to take this ground plane off because it just gets in the way. Uh, and uh, of course, you could scroll in and out, uh, look at it closer if you want to. But uh, as you can see, our new custom static that we have created now has our new artwork in the frame. Um, probably if I was a little bit more careful in picking a frame to begin with, this picture would probably look better with one of the gray or bluish frames. Uh, so you want to look at your frames and, and look at the artwork that you're going to put behind them and, and try to make something that matches there as well. But, you know, for the example of this tutorial, this would be fine. So we can just close this out and I want to go ahead and place it into one of my cells. I'm going to go ahead and put this one in uh, my tower. It's a little private um, player home that's going to be in my mod as I said if I ever get it released finished and released so I've got my interior up here and I'm just going to look around and I think I've got a place I want to put this right here at this kitchen table so I'm going to sort of zoom around and get centered in there and uh, what you're going to do is just drag it off and drop it into your window here and just I'll have to pull it out. Just give me a minute while I get this rotated properly. Kind of swing it around. It'd probably be better to have a, a little bit larger of a picture there, but uh, like I say, just for this tutorial, this will do fine. I sort of like to look at stuff from the top down just to make sure that I've got a. Uh, these walls are curved so they're a little tricky to get stuff lined up on um, sometimes I just have to use the little clickers here to get everything like I need it and get it off the wall just a little and that'll probably look okay in the game I'm just gonna drop it down just a little bit and it's not quite centered up but this is just we wanna we just wanna see what it looks like in the game so I'm gonna go ahead and launch the game and I'll meet you there 
Okay, so uh, here we are in my little player tower where we placed our custom artwork, and there it is right there. Uh, doesn't look too bad. Not not big enough to be on that wall. I'll need a bigger painting for that one. Uh, but uh, for this tutorial, this uh, was just a good example. We can uh, toggle collision and go in a little bit closer on it since I've got this table in the way. And, uh, you know, it does not look half bad. Um, it doesn't even look too bad zooming in. The normal map and the, uh, uh, the canvas behind it, I think, look pretty darn good. And you could actually look at it from the side, and that's where you really kind of start to see where the normal map just uh, adds a little bit more depth. So uh, not, too, not too shabby. I uh, appreciate you guys uh, checking it out. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, be sure and leave me a comment uh, or look me up on the uh, Bethesda forums. Uh, I am Baylock there. Uh, feel free to PM me or you can just leave a post in. Uh, probably the best place to catch me is in the, um, in the CK forum. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed.